Thank you so much for tuning in for this special edition of the Run and Plays podcast. We have the best player in college basketball with us. It's Sabrina Unescu, and she is the best because she is the only player in NCAA history to notch 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, 1,000 assists. She also holds the NCAA's record for triple doubles with 26. I know you've heard all about these stats. I know, I know. But Sabrina, answer for us. What are you the most proud of in your college career? Um, I mean, obviously, aside from getting to a Final Four and, and all that stuff with my team, um, I'd probably say either the rebounds or, or the assist part of the 2K1, K1, K just because they're a little bit more out of your control and um, kind of harder to get as a guard. Yeah, the, the thousand assists really caught our eye as well. Because you are at such a level, you are so good that you could play hero ball every night and you don't, you get your teammates involved. Like at what point in your basketball development, like middle school, high school, college, did you want to make assists uh, an emphasis of yours? Yeah, I was young. I was in middle school and I was playing two years up. So I was playing on the eighth grade team and I wasn't able to score because I was still too little. And so the only way that I was able to contribute in games was to pass the ball and and to make plays and so that's really when I started to learn that um, that's very impactful in the game and even if you're not scoring or doing something um, you know for yourself you could still impact the game and, and help your teammates so I think from a really young age that was the only way that I was able to play is if I was able to pass and so from there it kind of just evolved. How are you training at this point we know that there's quarantine everybody has uh, social distancing at this point how are you keeping yourself in shape with the unknown right now? Yeah, um, I work out like in my yard. I have some medicine balls, some bands. Um, I've been doing a lot of push-ups. Yeah. <laughs> um, so doing a lot of stuff like body weight stuff, but I've been getting sore from it, so it's good. And then uh, my high school's track is open, so trying to find a track to, to run, do some, um, some work on the field, and then finding any hoop that I can. There's some private gyms that are open, or I'll walk to the park and, and try and shoot there. Um, but that that part's kind of the hardest finding really a gym to get into. But there's been some in the Bay Area that I've I've been able to get into. Yeah, we saw you at uh, Pat Turner's gym, UP mm-hmm. training with uh, with Steph Curry. How was it working out with him, and how was it training with him during this time? Yeah, well, he he just stopped by. Um, he doesn't live too far from there, and so uh, I was there working out with with um, with Packy. And so then he just stopped by and said hi. We kind of played horse shot around it. It wasn't really too much of a, of a hard workout. He hadn't left the house in a long time. So we stayed uh, within six feet. So uh, just to make sure. Steph is a big fan of yours. And I asked, I asked him a question knowing we had this podcast ahead of us. Oh, I just lost the picture. Here it goes. Um, I said, I'm wondering Steph, if I can get your trained eye when you watch her play or workout, what strikes you as her top strength? And Steph replied, competitive fire and ability to control the pace of the game. She seems like she's never out of control and knows what she wants to do every play. She's that good and talented that she can be so methodical throughout the game. What do you think hearing that assessment from Steph? (laughs) That's really nice to hear from him. Um, But it's something that I've continued to grow. I mean, from my freshman year to my senior year, um, just kind of letting the game come to me and then obviously growing and maturing and having gone through those years of playing and kind of facing all kinds of defenses. Um, it's, I've really like slowed down and the game's just been slowed down for me, especially this last year. I just felt like I was always one step ahead and I've just seen everything. And so now it's, it's really, like he said, methodical and just trying to figure out where I want players to go in order to, to get the results. Do you feel like you've mastered this chessboard? Because he mentioned the word methodical, and I really like that. So let's say your team just hauled down a defensive rebound. You're taking the ball up the floor. Is there a play in your mind that you want to run? The coaches ask you to run something. Or as you see the floor, are you looking for defensive breakdowns? Are you looking for mismatches? Can you just tell us, like, the video game that you see in front of you? Yeah, it's it's as I'm taking it down the floor, I'm reading the defense, and so I'm I'm seeing like where they're leaning towards what what players they're running to to defend and then I try and kind of use that against them so if I can tell like if two are going towards one defender and and they're kind of miscommunicating on who to guard then I know one's going to be open because two are guarding one or um, if they're running back on defense and they're not sprinting and we're sprinting then I know at one point 
our offense is going to pass them. And so just really trying to, to pinpoint where they're going to make their mistake while they're running back on defense and then just use that to the best of our ability. How have teams handled you over the course of your college career? Like, is there a junk defense somebody threw at you that makes you smiled or did you feel really respected by a certain kind of defense? I've really had everything. Um, I've had a box in one, triangle in two, um, double team, like off of pick and rolls. I've, I've really had everything, um, which I think has helped just because now I'm able to know all the counters to it and figure out what ways to score. But the box in one is always funny to have a, a college team do just because that's so that was so high school and middle school that it was just funny to see that in college. How has it been for you uh, we talked about college and things slowing down and, you know, you playing well on a, on a big level, but when did it start to change off the court for you? You know, you talk about uh, you're working out with Steph, you mentored by Kobe, LeBron shows love. When did that start to change for you? Uh, where you Yeah, talking? I think my, well, like I, I'd probably say my junior or sophomore to junior year, um is when that kind of changed I mean me and Steph have been friends for a while so that was always there but obviously him coming to the games in the Bay Area and stuff um both games was, was really cool to see but I'd probably say when we kind of got to an our team had gotten to a national level probably by my like junior to senior year um is when everything kind of exploded and it was crazy just to see the amount of NBA players watching our games posting about us um whether it was on Twitter or coming to the games uh, I mean, it, it was really crazy to see. It was almost like every game we were on the road, someone from that, some NBA player from that area wanted to come to the game and, um, or showed up. And so it was really cool to see how, you know, our, our team kind of put women's basketball on the map. Do you think that, um, you know, your play kind of galvanized a lot of people? Because I've been a fan of college women's basketball for a long time. But I, 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 when I did go to games, it seemed like there was a different energy when you were on the floor. Did you feel that way? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't really know any better. So I think mm -hmm. being in it is just, it's just how I play and kind of the energy that I bring. But I do think um, the way that we play basketball and the way our team plays just really fast paced is very similar to the men's game. So I think it does attract a lot of like men's basketball players and, and people that watch a lot of men's basketball to watch our games because of just how fast pace we play in transition we get a lot of shots up and and so I, I think it, it does definitely attract the eye of uh, of a men's basketball fan. I mean there are some naysayers who look at women's basketball or like no I'm not watching it it's your get back in the kitchen kind of crowd but for the crowd that understands basketball plays basketball appreciates basketball how have you felt embraced in like a game recognized game kind of way? I mean, it, it's really been crazy just from Kobe to Steph to LeBron to John Morant and just to all those players that, you know, are, are playing and uh, do respect our game. You almost do it for them. You don't really do it for those those people that don't believe in you. I think, you know, growing up and it's always been trying to prove those people, those people wrong, like trying to change those people that don't respect women's sports. And, and now I think getting to this level, it's like you don't really care about those people. It's those people that believe in you and respect your game and understand that you put in just as much work as they do. And uh, you go through the same things that they do with wins, losses, uh, the way you prepare. And so it's almost just appreciating those people that do see that value in you and, and kind of finding um, strength in that. How is uh, how is Kobe? You know, we talked about him. That's been really um, well documented. But how was it the mentorship, and how was it the day um, he passed for you? Yeah, I mean, the mentorship was awesome. Uh, we got to become really, really close friends. I mean, we talked uh, uh, a few times a week. We talked really about everything, whether it was basketball, his family, um, my basketball. It really the conversation took us uh, wherever wherever we really wanted. And so obviously that day was tough. I really don't even remember that day a lot. I kind of blacked out. I don't remember the game, but um, obviously like the toughest day of my life and probably will be one of the toughest days of my life just because of how the news hit me right before the game. And I was supposed to see him a week after and we had just talked. And so um, that's something that I'm obviously still dealing with and, and we'll never really get over. How did the game kind of, provide solace during that time for you yeah I mean I knew I had to play I knew I, that was a really big game for us as well and 
uh, just to be able to see my teammates kind of rally, you know, for me and, and do that for me was huge. I mean, they were, I wasn't able to go out and warm up and, you know, they warmed up and they held it together because they were obviously hurt as well. And so just seeing um, how powerful that team aspect of, of everything was, I mean, was kind of, you know, the changing point in our season. And we talked about, I was at the, uh, the Stanford game the day you went to his funeral. Can you tell me how that day was? You start off in Los Angeles, you give an emotional speech, then you have to fly back up to the Bay Area and then break a record. How was, tell me how that day was. Was, it a, was that a blur as well or was it more to it? No, that, that day was a blur as well. I, I didn't think it would be. Um, you know, I started the day off well and I was excited to just feel like I was, you know, normal and, and put together. And then obviously showing up there, you never really know what to expect. A lot of, a lots of, lots of emotion, lots of people. And so um, being able to speak and then, you know, rush back to, to the Bay Area to try and play, I wasn't able to make it out to warm ups either. Um, and so I obviously was feeling really sick, lots, lots of emotion. Um, somehow was able to do it. My head was in a cloud. I, the game was not my best, but, um, just had to find a way to win. And obviously my teammates helped with that too, because I had missed walk through shoot around. I really wasn't in my routine and in my schedule. Um, but it was, it was cool to have been able to do it on that day um, and, and kind of make history on, on such a like special day for me. Were you surprised um, how easy that rebound was when you got the, when you got that the last one? Yeah. <laughs> it was a perfect air ball, right? <laughs> It was amazing. <laughs> I remember tweeting about it. I, I had the tweet ready to go, and I see you caught it, and I was like, "Did this happen? Was this? Yeah, really, was, that, was that? Was that the one? Through? This go through? Okay, I'm gonna just tweet it because I, re I, I'm pretty sure this is a rebound. <laughs> yeah, no. As soon as she shot it, too, I was like, "Wow, that looks really off." I was like, "That looks like it's coming right to me." I was like, yeah. "All right, I'm gonna stand right here and catch it." <laughs> How has this been for you kind of mixing like the fact that basketball is a team sport and you love your team, but you are also getting like on an individual level an incredible amount of attention because that's the caliber of player that you are. How do you, how have you found a balance between not minimizing your accomplishments, but also saying like, I am part of a team. Can we please talk about team, right? Your yeah. team is 31 and two. How do you walk this line? Yeah, I mean, I think for me and my teammates understand this, um, it's all about the team and I really deflect everything towards them because I wouldn't be who I am without them. And, you know, our team wouldn't be as special with every single, you know, player one through 13 or 12. Uh, and so I think they understand that. And so as long as our foundation and core of a group of us understand how important each one is and how an important role each one of us have, all the outside noise is kind of just additional like recognition, so to say. And so we're all just as happy for one another when Satsu wins her position award and Ruthie wins her position award. And then I win my point guard of the year. It's just really cool to be able to kind of see a group of, of girls and individuals that are so committed to each other that they don't really care about who gets player of the year, who gets the award. And so um, for me, it's been awesome just because I have been getting so much recognition and I definitely don't feel guilty for it because I know that my teammates support me and understand the hard work that I've put in and, and deserve it. And so it's been really cool to kind of have that, that balance between the two. Yeah, you know, what is it like getting ready to embark on this WNBA draft? It has to be virtual, but you have some teammates in the draft as well. Like usually this would be like a collective excitement and you probably have to do it from all over the country away from each other. But are you finding ways to, to, to talk, to feel connected, to have this excitement with your teammates alongside you? Yeah, I mean, it, it does suck. We were planning on all being in New York together for the draft and had plans with our families and stuff. And so, it, you know, it is kind of unfortunate fortunate we're all going to be in different parts of the country uh virtually um obviously but so different parts uh, of the country and, and trying to do this but um I mean it's awesome it's so cool to be able to do it alongside my teammates and um just being able to share that moment with them just because we've all worked so hard for this and so I'm excited for the next level hopefully to be able to see them and, and play against them and maybe even play with them, but it, it is really a, an, an honoring experience to be able to be, you know, amongst two of the best players in our program's history and now going on to the next level. Mm -hmm. What's it like, what's it like working out towards the WMGA season that may not happen with the unknown of the coronavirus? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been hard just because 
there's not really a timeline. So it, you, you're trying to peak and, and get enough rest and, and then amp up your, your trainings, but you don't really know when that date is to when you're going to be out there. And so mm -hmm. it's been a little bit of, of a challenge trying to figure out, okay, I should take some time off or, oh, now I need to start back up. But um, I think we're kind of following, the, I'm following the NBA's lead right now and they're projected, I guess, June-ish as of now, the earliest. And so the WNBA probably can't start before that. And a lot of professional leagues probably are going to be starting around the same time. And so uh, with that in mind, just kind of trying to figure out, like, now I need to be working out, start getting in shape. But I, And I did take a, a little while off right after the season to just let my body rest because I'm not going to have this much time ever again. So it is kind of a, a blessing in disguise. How do you – prepare for the draft knowing that you know the Liberty have a really great chance of picking you how do you do you think hey I'm going to go to the Liberty or do you keep an open mind with this how do you prepare for the draft knowing you might be a consensus number one pick but it's not certain right now yeah um I do definitely keep an open mind just so I don't get disappointed so if there's a trade or anything happens um I'm more than willing to go anywhere. I mean, I do know that the likelihood will probably be Brooklyn, but um, at the same time, I understand that we probably won't be in Brooklyn for a very long time due to what's going on there right now. And so um, obviously just very excited for the draft. And I know it's not really how I had expected it to go, but just being alongside my family and still being able to share a day that I had dreamed about for so long is, is exciting. And so really whatever team, picks me I'm excited to be able to be a part of that organization because they believe in me so uh keep an open mind if if well shoot if, I wanted to ask uh, you a New York City question people have still been asking me that yeah. question. Say, hypothetically you go there hypothetically like New York City and, and they have their hardships right now New York City is one of the most beautiful awesome cities on the planet I think um how much time have you spent in New York City I guess what do you what do you know about it uh, yeah, I've actually played in Barclays Center once for the Jordan Brand Classic when I was in high school. And so um, I've really only been there twice and I haven't um, been able to see the entire city and like go out. I've always been there for basketball. And so if I end up playing there, I, I am excited to just be able to kind of be a tourist and be able to go and, and see everything and, and live there for, for a couple months because I do hear how great it is. And Hopefully, when they get everyone back healthy, we'll, you know, through sport, we'll kind of be able to bring the life back into um, into Brooklyn. Are people telling you about what it's like to be a professional? And I think you're, you've been a four-year player. Um, you are an extraordinary talent, but there is still a step up to the pros. What are you expecting? What kind of advice are you hearing from other women in the WNBA or people in the NBA? Um, what, you know, how, what are the ways? What are the ways? you might even have to raise your game even more. Yeah, I mean, on, on every aspect, you know, on the court wise, whether it's shooting, scoring, passing, I mean, everyone's more athletic, stronger, longer. And so there's going to be growing pain just as much as there was from high school into college. And so um, I'm excited for that. And I think I'm trying to use this time to, to get kind of a step ahead on, on all that stuff. And so the game will be completely different. Um, so I'm excited to be able to work towards that. And then, um, obviously being a professional is completely different than being in college and kind of having that support system around you of, of school and counselors and coaches and, you know, being a professional, you're kind of on your own. I mean, you go eat pregame meal by yourself and you go do all the, all these things on the road by yourself, which I'm not used to because it's like in college, you're kind of coddled a little bit more where it's like, you guys have to be here and as a team. And so um, it's going to be a new challenge that I'm excited for. And I know this sounds like a pretty simple question, but what are the things that you want for your professional career? I mean, hopefully to be able to play at the next level first, I guess that's, um, that's a step and hopefully there'll be a season, you know, this, this year, although it'll be pushed back, but um, hopefully just continue to, to grow my brand as an individual, but also just using my voice, um, you know, from the platform that I have to, kind of advocate for something that's bigger than just basketball and that's you know girls in sports and equality and so just trying to use kind of that platform that I have at the next level and and uh, trying to see a change hopefully. You talk about the platform that you have and being a professional and with that comes um, you know endorsements and you talked about um, the sneaker deals with Puma on the table and Nike and Under Armour. 
I know that you've talked about that, but one thing that I have been, you know, looking at in the sneaker game is there haven't been a lot of women that have their own signature shoe. Is that something that's important to you going forward as a, from a marketing standpoint? Um, and if you do get one, how would that feel? Yeah, I mean, I, I think before this all happened, I never thought about it because I didn't think it was even a possibility because women don't usually have signature shoes. Um, and then I think, you know, listening to a lot of these companies and the goals and visions that they had to have a signature shoe down the line, I was like, oh, actually, that would that would be pretty cool. And I feel like a lot of individuals would want to buy that shoe and, and wear that shoe. And so um, I think now, you know, taking kind of two weeks uh, fast forward from what I had thought before, um, starting this, I, I do think a shoe would be really cool or like a clothing line or something, um, which would be awesome and would be, um, you know, kind of beyond belief just because I'm so used to buying other people's shoes and kind of looking up to them. And so kind of having that reciprocated would be, would be awesome. Have you, have, yeah. Oh, sorry, Logan. <laughs> have you made a decision? And if you do, what goes into that decision? What do you want to see from your line? Yeah. Um, like a, I have not made a shoe, like a shoe deal decision yet on, um, who to sign with, obviously I have a great relationship with Steph. And so that part's kind of hard. And then Is I have a great you? relationship with Nike <laughs> because I've been Nike for 10 years. And then Puma is also kind of on the up and coming. So there's a lot of pros and cons to all of them. And so it's kind of been hard, um, trying to figure out who I want to go with and, and what the best uh, fit would be. Is Steph in your ear right now? Is he saying, you know, UA is right here. You know what I mean? I got you. I can, I can, I can plug you up. What's up? I think I, he, I think he texts me almost every day. Okay. <laughs> He's working hard. Hey, when it comes to platform as well, I want to stay on this for a moment because that's really empowering. Have you gotten a taste of what you could do with your voice or have you seen other athletes use their voice to speak on things um, in a way that really makes people listen? What do you want to do? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think I'm just keep continuing to evolve that kind of side of my platform and, and my voice. Usually I just like to get on Twitter and read what's ever on there and then, and then turn it off. And then now, um, especially this year with the Nike selling of my jerseys and then having posted it and then the Nike jerseys come out and just kind of seeing the impact that my voice and, and my platform does have on kind of the world um, has been cool to see and, and also kind of been a reality check like okay I do have a platform I do have a voice and I need to use it to the best of my ability and I mean Steph does it better than anyone with especially now during this time reaching out to people whether it's FaceTiming the nurse or um, you know talking to doctors on how to how to cope with the coronavirus and and he's a prime example of of, of someone that has a, a great platform and, and how to use it and so trying to just learn a little bit from him and, and everyone else that is having an impact in, in society and, and trying to use that to the best of my ability. I saw another way you used your voice. Um, ESPN was going to put the draft on ESPN too, right? It's coming up later this week. There are no other sports happening right now. And you just casually mentioned on Twitter, maybe it would be great if it was on ESPN. And then lo and behold, later that night, the announcement comes out that the WNBA draft is on ESPN now. So I, I personally think you played a little bit of a role in that. But what is that like tasting? It's almost like tasting that power, but using it for good, that if you speak up, you could be a force for change. Yeah, well, when they came out with it being, it said like ESPN2 in the, in the ESPN app, I was like, I was very confused. Like, what could possibly be on TV right now? And so then I was like, all right, maybe I'll tweet something. It's kind of always an adrenaline rush to, to tweet something <laughs> like that. And they might have been in the works already. I mean, I was hearing that they were trying to get it to ESPN. And I was like, whatever. I mean, a tweet's not going to hurt. And so then tweeting it and then seeing that they, you know, it might have been in the works or they came out with it on ESPN was cool because I think it's deserving to be on ESPN. For sure. I think I will credit you with like that final push. Maybe, maybe even okay. a little of too because when the projected number one pick says a little something they have to listen yeah. man um what oh is God. what ahead, is, <laughs> when you talk about the platform is is with the WNBA the Warriors are kind of talk the Warriors have expressed um the Warriors have expressed uh interest in having a WNBA team in the Bay Area and we know the market the Bay Area how good a market right. is the Bay Area is for women's basketball one, what would it like, be like for you to see the WNBA team in the Bay and also to potentially, I don't know, maybe down the line, play for a team 
in the Bay for the WBA? Yeah, I mean, I wish they had come out with one this year and had a top pick because that'd be really cool to be able to potentially play in the Bay Area. Um, I mean, growing up here and going to Warriors games ever since I was young, it'd be almost a dream come true to be able to play professionally in the Bay Area, um, kind of, you know, the place where everything started. And um, hoping that they do have a team uh, here just because I do think, you know, there are so many young girls and so many um, – people just in the area that value women's sports and that would go to the games. And so kind of having that partnership with the Warriors, I think would be huge, not only for them as an NBA team, but for a WNBA team in the Bay area. Um, so I would definitely be jealous if I wasn't in the, <laughs> in the WNBA and, and playing uh, for the Bay area team, but who knows what, what will happen down the line. Yeah. You kind of touched on that being, you know, growing up in the Bay, how was it, were you a Warriors fan growing up? How, and, what was your favorite moments growing up as a Warrior fan, if you were? I was. I, I was a Warriors fan back when we weren't very, very good. Um, <laughs> and so, I mean, there was so many. I had, like, courtside seats, um, like, courtside box seats, because they were, like, $300 for the entire season. So, <laughs> me and my brother and my dad, we went to a lot of the game, like, season ticket um, holders for the games. And so, I was there when, you know, Monte Ellis was there and Andres Bejans was there and, uh, Steven Jackson, so all these players. And so it was really cool to to be able to watch them. And then obviously Steph came into the league and then um, Monte left and kind of just being able to see um, all that uncertainty that people were talking about with the mistakes that they made of, of leaving Monte and then bringing in Steph. And um, I mean, now Steph is probably one of the best warriors to to go down uh, in, in the franchise history. So it's, it's really cool to kind of be able to see that transformation from kind of ground zero into winning championships. What's your favorite moment in person as a Warriors fan? Gosh, that's hard. Um, I was there, I was there last year yeah. in, in Portland when they won and oh. around all those Portland fans and um, kind of being able to, to take on the, the whole Warriors was cool just because I get so much crap at school being, <laughs> you know, in Eugene and not being a Trailblazers uh, fan. And I, have, I am a Trailblazers fan, just not when they're playing the Warriors. So uh, that was one of the greatest moments. And then also just meeting a lot of the players when I was younger was cool. Were you talking smack you know, at the Moda Center last year? Were you, when, when they were? When <laughs> I they was. Were... I, I, I was there with my brother. It was dope. I was <laughs> sure everyone was coming up for pictures. I had my Warriors gear on, my, my, Steph, my Steph jersey. So it was cool to be able to kind of hold that against them. When you watch Steph play, what do you notice about his game? He, he really is the baby face assassin. I mean, he, he's so happy and he's so like, he enjoys what he does. And so I think that kind of, you know, everyone thinks that I'm so serious and so intense and I am, but I do find joy in the game. And so I think, you know, it's kind of a breath of fresh air watching someone that is loving every second of what he's doing, but also just killing while he's out there. I mean, you know, the way he shoots the ball, the way he's transformed the game of basketball with how far he shoots it from. I mean, there's kids in gyms that are now trying to shoot from half court because he does. <laughs> and so kind of just being able to watch how effortlessly, you know, he perfects his craft, whether it's around the rim or, or shooting, uh, is, makes me want to be a better person, but just kind of makes me uh, watch in awe at, at him and, and how well he plays. You said something there that people think you're super serious and you are, but it reminded me to ask you, has there been anything in like the narrative that people write about you that you don't think is true or you were surprised to read about yourself? Um, I think, I think just the demeanor I have on the court is like so intense and I'm, I'm so locked in. Um, but I'm not like that as a like person, even outside <laughs> or if we're winning. And so uh, I think, Obviously, everyone that knows me understands that I'm always like laughing. Everything's always kind of easygoing. I'm not that competitive unless we're playing a game or it's something that I have to compete at. Um, and so I do think, you know, a lot of people always think I'm so serious and focused, but I am really, um, I'm always joking, laughing. Like if you know me, I'm always smiling. So, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You talked about uh, Steph and coming to the games. He comes with his daughters. And he really helps try to build women's basketball. How much, how important and how much do you think women's basketball needs those type of allies to grow the game? They for sure do. And, and that's who starts it. And hopefully, you know, my kids and, and their kids in, in the future aren't going to need 
um, kind of a, a man's uh, icon, uh, a man's icon, and um, kind of that platform that they have in order to kind of get recognition. I mean, women and men should have the same recognition for the craft that they have and the talent mm -hmm. that they have, and they shouldn't kind of lean on one another for support. But I think now where we are in society, we need you know them more than anything, and so being able to see Steph bring his daughters to the game, watch, you know, women's basketball games and be in such support of women's sports and, and little girls because he has, you know, he has to, is really what we need. And so I think it's awesome that he's doing what he's doing and, and so many other, um, you know, athletes are. I think you did touch on this for, for a second um, with his ally, with his allyship. Do you, how do you see a world where, yeah, Steph can't, Steph and LeBron, yeah, they can be, on the sidelines, but we're not looking for that. And we're not looking to um, yet say basically, yeah, the men are looking, so you should too. When do you think you can get, you can get to that point? And what do you think a world will be like once you get to that point? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just starting, um, to be honest. I think, you know, obviously anything you read on social media, it's still bashing on women in sports, bashing on any accomplishments that women have as sports. And so, I think there's still a long way to go, you know, for when there's going to be equality in, in sports and really in gender as a whole. But I think, you know, we're starting and, and kind of we're starting to peak and, and see change, see like men's showing up to women's games, sitting courtside and just appreciating them for the sport that they're playing. Doesn't matter what they look like or um, the color of their skin or what gender they are. Uh, I mean, Kobe did that better than anyone. And so I think uh, you know, people are trying to live, live on his legacy, especially those players in the NBA that looked up to him. And so, you know, they're trying to take on that kind of girl dad and, and appreciate, um, you know, women in sports. And so it's cool to see, um, obviously, Kobe kind of starting that transition, but seeing it kind of take on a life of its own now and excited to see what it's going to be like, you know, in a couple of years and, and in the future, because I do think it's going to change. Is there a Kobe um, sign thing in the back behind you right it's, now? It's Kobe and Steven Jackson. It's kind of the Warriors wall. Okay, okay. What? So, yeah. can you give me the story behind that that sign right? That, that, that. I mean, I won it at. I I was at Darrell Wright's. I always went to Darrell Wright's um, night school shooting. Back, mm -hmm. I was the only girl. I was in like fifth grade, and if you won shooting competitions, you won signed all these signed. Uh, there's a Monte Ellis sign ball, Corey McGetty sign ball. You won all these Warriors things because he was playing at the time. So I think I made a bunch of half court shots and I, I was just winning every competition in order to get all these signed. And that one has Kobe in it, which is pretty cool. Okay. Is that is signed by Kobe or is that signed? No, this one's that? Signed, that one's signed by Steven Jackson. Okay, cool, cool. Is this your like childhood bedroom or is this an office? This is my or? brother's room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> he has all this stuff up from when we wanted together. We would we would try and win a bunch of stuff together and then collaborate on which one we wanted. <laughs> Teamwork. Teamwork with the twin brother. Um, we are just about out of time with you. We want to thank you so much for your time. And I want to leave you with this, if you could answer this one for us. As you embark on your professional career, is there a piece of advice that will carry you through or maybe even a mantra that you just tell yourself as you think about your own strength? But what are you telling yourself as you are about to begin the next chapter in your career? Uh, I mean, I think you just be enjoy, enjoy the journey and, and enjoy the process. Um, that's really, you know, where you find victory is in the process. And there's going to be struggles. There's going to be highs and lows. And especially at this next level, moving away from home and not having that kind of security of being in college around those people. Um, just kind of finding strength in, in all that adversity that I'm going to face and, and enjoying the process because, you know, not a lot of people get this opportunity and I'm blessed to hopefully be able to play at the next level. And so I'd uh, kind of just enjoy all the troubles and tri tribulations that come with that. Sabrina Unescu, thank you so much. Logan and I were so excited for this interview. Like, <laughs> over our questions, we wanted to talk about everything and yes. we really appreciate a moment of your time. Thank you so much.